Mark, I know that you've been a buyer of gold, um, but for quite some time now. So is this because you have you shared the concerns we just heard from Thomas Petrify or, or um, is there just is this just kind of general portfolio hedge for you? I think you should have more gold than than ever in, a, in an economy that is based upon stimulus. Um, if you can't have positive economic growth without a $1 trillion deal getting passed in Congress, then we have serious problems. And so until that changes, we, re we remained uh, bullish on gold because of that fact. Okay. So, Paul, let me bring you in as well. I mean, from a traditional portfolio kind of asset allocation point of view, I mean, listen, a lot of people will say, ah, I live in the U.S., Stocks are priced in dollars. Do I really have to worry about the, the low value of the dollar? I mean, you, we experience it in a lot of different ways as costs run up from the things that we import or, you know, we have less purchasing power for things like gold or, yes, even Bitcoin or, you know, any other commodity or, or anything that's priced in dollars. So, Paul, do you think it actually means that the stock market gains that we're seeing are not quite as valid because they're kind of the flip side of this weak dollar coin? Well, you'll always find some portions of your portfolio that are doing a little bit better than others. And, and certainly there are still companies that are making good profits and there's productivity growth in this country. We still see a good future in U.S. equity. So we wouldn't we wouldn't be changing that. But we we would agree with Mark that that there is prospect for gold to do better. And so we added it. To, we were favorable on commodities back in March and and do recommend a two to four percent commodity allocation, depending upon the the investor's potential or particular risk tolerance. So, yes, we do believe in stocks. Yes, we do believe the, in the U.S. economy. But we also think that part of that broad portfolio should include some gold at this point. I mean, Mark, at what point do we so I'm curious as well where you would be in the market, because a lot of people who are worried about this dynamic, even a little bit, would say, you know, that's why you want to be in things like industrials, materials, maybe financials, um, if this is kind of a best case scenario. Worst case scenario, we start talking about inflation, maybe the market multiple comes down and that sort of thing. So I, I am curious, uh, given what you said about your concerns with gold, where that leaves you on what else you should have exposure to. Yeah, you definitely have to have a diversified portfolio. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we're having an over allocation to the gold space. But going into 2021, you got to own health care. If what's going to get us out of this pandemic is a vaccine, how do you not own, own health care stocks? It baffles me that folks still don't own some of these companies that are going to get us out of this issue. So you got to own health care. Industrials, although it's, it's kind of um, flat right now for the month, I think that all, if you look at the emerging markets, you look at China, they're doing unprecedented spending. And so it's, it, I think that there is a lot of opportunity in that sector uh, for 2021. And then if this vaccine does work and we start doing a good job at it, and people start going back to normal, you got to have this uh, consumer discretionary, those airlines, those cruises, um, all those um, go, go back to normal stocks are going to continue to do well. And so that's what 2021 is, if this vaccine is effective and if it can get into the arms of people around the country. All right. And Paul, before we go, let's just bring this back full circle then. I mean, what do you think happens to the dollar here? What do you think happens to inflation and bond yields? Uh, you know, is the market too complacent? Well, probably for the longer term, but that's likely to be several years away. In the meantime, growth is what matters. And if we can get economic support and relief to help support spending and growth in this country, that should drive earnings. We do have a, a, a $175 EPS target, earnings per share, on the S&P 500 for the end of next year. That's a pretty good number, we think, and a really good reason to hold stocks. We would agree to hold consumer discretionary. We would also agree with Mark on health care and would add a materials just in case we see further growth in 2021. But we also want to play the technology trends that we think have accelerated over the last year. So we think that sort of split, that sort of division gives people a good, investors a good division or a good way to play both growth uh, and some of the trends that are still going to be with us for a while from the pandemic. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.